What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing out there on this uh, fine Sunday afternoon? Sorry, we uh, kind of had a little bit of technical difficulties. Kind of, kind of, kind of got off to a little late start, but I'm here. What's up, Taryn? Appreciate it. Yep, yep. Definitely should have a pretty decent show today. Oh, man. All right, all right. Good afternoon, Kansas City. Man, it feels good to be back another week. Uh, How's everybody doing out there? Man, these allergies are kicking butt, man. Whew, can't stand them. But so far, we still here. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Right. So that's all good. Um, man, NCAA tournament is in full effect. March Madness is in full swing. I'm 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 happy and sad at the same time. So, just know that. <laughs> I represent the 816 Kansas City, Missouri side. Do have some, some folks on the 913 side. Kansas, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas. Whatever. So, KU falls to Arkansas 72-71. to 71. I, I was, I'm going to be honest. I was, it was a close game. Very close game. Um. I was, uh, clearly it was close, right? It was 72 to 71. I was full of joy watching KU lose, to be honest with you. Oh, man, I was tickled. Tickled pink, as they say, right? (laughs) Probably not pink, but tickled, for sure. Um, But, you know, my my trash-talking, joyful emotions, they they were short-lived. As I watched my beloved KU, uh, MU, excuse me, good gosh. As I watched my beloved team, MU, they they basically fell asleep at the wheel and got dog walked or tiger walked I should say. It it was brutal. I I honestly did not expect that. I was like, okay, MU gonna come in. They they made it into the tor- tournament. They gonna come in. They gonna get the little little first first game. You know they're gonna they're gonna. Shake and bake a little bit. Do what they got to do. Get the first game through. They're going to advance to the uh, Sweet 16. Yeah, no. None of that happened. None of that happened. It's it's very difficult to win games only holding the lead, well, your only lead, um, for 30 seconds. And that's exactly what happened to MU yesterday. They... They held, they finally got the lead, but you only hold it for 30 seconds. Yeah, that, that's not going to break no no one's confidence. That's not going to question no one's uh, offense or defense or put the pressure on no coaches if you can only hold the lead for 30 seconds, and it's your only lead. That's that's horrible. That's horrible. Um, I mean, it's, I'm not upset. You know, that just means um, we should, look forward to to the future, you know. Um I I see the team, you know, well, for a lot of these kids, you know, this was they that was their last game as as college students. So that was their last game as college students. So definitely bittersweet for them and and I kind of feel for them. I understand. I mean, my son, two of my sons play football. Um my second oldest son, he uh he's a senior this year, so I I I I got to witness as they lost their last game, uh football game earlier in the year, I got to witness, you know, the pain and emotions that he was going through knowing that as a high school athlete that was your last last year playing football with with the people you grew up with students you know kids you went to school with build a brother brotherly bond with you know so man I, every time i see 
those teams go down, you know, knowing that it's their last game, because some of them might not make it to the N- NBA or any further than that. It's it's tough. So hats off to them for a well fought season. You know, they did what they did um, to get to where they were, and that's that's amazing. You know. So hats off to them. Hats off to the coach. He'll be back. He, like I said, they just gave him an extension, so he'll be back. And hopefully he can, you know, coach the next, the coming up, the sophomores, freshmen, juniors, you know, get, get them back to where they need them, to, to where he just got this current team. Um, Man, I, I just – like I said, KU they or MU they got KU lost, but they lost going down fighting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? MU lost. They just they just lost. No, 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 no. Like I said, they got dog walked. They fell to Princeton seventy eight to sixty three. You know, I mean, they came back a little bit, but man, nah. No, no, they didn't. No, they, they, they got exposed like crazy. They, like I said, you know, KU lost in a very close game. The Tigers got spayed or neutered, however you want to look at it. That's what happened. So, all right, we're going to, you know, that's that, you know, on the college thing. I'm not big on college stuff. I watch those two teams, uh, even though I'm not a KU fan. I'm an MU fan. I still watch those two teams considering that we're, you know, neighbors or cousins or whatever, however you want to look at it. So a lot has been happening. Free agent frenzy is going on. Um, Man, I, this is the part of the NFL season that I like. I don't, I mean, I ain't going to say I don't care because I love football. Um, I like the fact when, you know, watching the idea of watching the sport. I love football. I love watching football. It's exciting. But this is the part that I love the most is watching the plugging and unplugging of personnel and seeing where different players end up, seeing how um, different teams are trying desperately to put together a solid dream team because that's what that's what they all do. They're not they're not like, hey, let's make our team slightly better. Well one, there's no money in that. Let's make our team slightly better than it was last season or this season or last season or you know until we get to where we want to there's really no money in that so they they go for the big names so i will you know i this is the part of the season i like i like to get to see um sporting kc i don't get it i don't know what's going on with 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 my Sporting KC team, I, I don't know. Uh, they fall two to one versus um, FC Dallas. Sporting KC, you know, while they they were able to obtain their first goal of the season, which was cool and 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 good. You know, you you kind of get that off your back. Finally, get the ball through the net. They they just couldn't push it to complete uh, on another two goal attempts. Which would have gave them the lead three to two, and in hindsight, probably would have won the game. Maybe I, we can't a speculation, but possibly they would have won the game. Uh, it seemed like they're still struggling with with scoring. Like it's still an issue that you know for them, you know, finding the net because it seemed like they 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 get so close, but they just can't can't get it to complete. They can't get it to full. So <clears throat> that's still an issue for them. Casey Current, I'm ready to watch them. Those those ladies can play. I'm ready. I'm ready to watch 
watching them ball out. Again, they're gonna they're gonna kick off. I believe they kick off the season doing battle with uh, North Carolina Courage, March twenty fifth. Can't wait for that. Uh, some some pretty cool. I mean, you know, not cool, but some pretty cool stuff. Sea Geek look like they're gonna remain the dis- uh, top source for distribution of the uh, current tickets um, through twenty twenty four, which is cool. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be the seller of the tickets. Um, 2024. I can't wait to see Casey Current Stadium. You know, that's when the stadium is uh, set to debut is in 2024. Um, don't really have the exact day, but I'm sure that sucker's going to be nice. And I think ultimately this is why the Royals now want their their stadium and stuff built because, you know, you got soccer coming in with new state. You got – Sporting KC and the Children Mercy Park, you know, which had, which has been up for, you know, what probably a little over ten years or something, but it's still nice. It was, you know, when it was put up, it was considered one of the nicest stadiums. You know, Wi-Fi and all that stuff and everything was automated. You know, for the most part, uh, I haven't been there. I just remember everyone talking about it. Um, so I'm sure, Kersey, Kate, uh, Kersey. Casey Current Stadium is going to be, you know, it's going to be nice. It has to be, right? I mean, all the tech, technological advances that we done came across and discovered and created has to be nice, right? Yeah, we'll see. I hope so. I'm definitely going to visit. I know that. Can't wait. Uh, the Royals, they still looking pretty decent during spring training. Um, they face off again against the Rockies today. Three, um, I think three ten. Uh, I have to double check the time on that. Um, it's it's the final game of a three series stint that they've had against the Rockies so far. Uh, the series is tied one to one. We're getting closer and closer to the um start of the season opener, and like I said, I just hope that they can ride out on um, you know, keep 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 riding high. On, on what they're doing in spring training because they're looking good. Like it, they're not. I like I guess I know it's spring training, you know, but it's it's looking on the up and up for the Royals. So that would be nice. That would be nice because, like I said, right now, Sporting KC, they not getting it done. <laughs> they not getting it done. Chiefs can't be the only team, uh, you know, in in the metropolitan area that's winning every damn thing, you know. I'm gonna need the Royals to do something. It's been too long, damn it. So let's let's go. I don't know. Weather here has been it's been on on weirdo time. I think it's only like twenty something degrees out there today, man. It's well it's supposed to get up to I think like I think maybe forty four or something. It's 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 been too too cold, man, and I think that's what's really been, you know, everybody walking around here kind of tired and stuff with the time change or whatever, but the weather has been stupid. Um, let's go ahead, man, and uh, we know where we're about to go. It's NFL draft. I don't know who I would draft, who I'll move up for, who I'll try to move down for, who I'll make a deal with. I don't know. There's a lot of talent in the draft. I'm just happy that it's going to be here in Kansas City. I think, what, April 28th is the first day, something like that. So, we we get to, like I said, I'm going to be there. I'm going to attempt to be there, see if I can talk to some people, you know, shake the scene a little bit, check it out. This is, a, like I said, kind of a, I don't want to say once in a lifetime, but, It'll be the first time I ever attended the NFL draft, so uh, I'm definitely going to see what I can see and do what I can do when I get there. Um, But yeah, I don't know. Like, I know there's some people, uh, Bryce Young, I don't know how I feel about uh, Bryce Young. Um, Heck of a player. Great young man, talented. I just, I'm not... I'm not 100% sold yet. Like, he would have to go to the perfect system because of his size. You know, like, 
he reminds me of a Kyler Murray. So, I mean, I, I, I never doubt a person based on, you know, their size and height and all that stuff, considering, you know, we had the great Doug Flutie and <laughs> doing things. I just, I don't know, man. That I just don't know how I feel about that. Like I said, he would have to go to the almost per- perfect system that that knows, like, hey, we're going to have to protect the heck out of this guy, um, you know, and we can probably try to make things happen. I don't know how much of a pocket passer he's going to be able to be at. Well, I don't, what is he, like 5'9 or something? I don't know. So, um, that's going to be interesting to see. I don't know who's the other quarterback. Like I said, I was so – I was watching – I didn't get a chance to watch much of the combine, but I was watching um, the the one that caught my eye, I think a uh, guy quarterback, uh, was uh, Richard Richardson, Anthony Richardson. Caught my eye. You know, 6'4", dude was – Dude looked hella athletic. I would definitely, uh, if I was looking for a quarterback, I would I would keep my eye on that young man. Uh, that he he he. I would definitely consider consider him. I don't even think they have him. Uh, trying to see real quick where they have him, you know, in the draft. Um, but yeah, Anthony Richardson out of uh, Florida, Florida Gators. Man, I, that's I was able to see him. Dude has an arm. He look like he, you know, has a pocket awareness. Um, I I can see him being. Six four two thirty one, yeah. I think it's I think it's forty was uh, four four three. Um, you know, fourth fastest quarterback since two thousand. At six four two forty four pounds, man. That so at, during the combine he was he was two forty four, running a four four three. That's raw, man. That's that's raw for real. That's raw. So we get to see, get to see. I, if I was, I think, I, honestly, honestly, I think, man, that's that was crazy. I think. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> Man, people, I ain't in the studio today. I'm I'm actually at the house doing this today, and these people are kids. Gotta love them. Anyway, <laughs> they good. the little one is going crazy. Right, I think it's nap time. Uh, <laughs> um, I I honestly think Anthony. <laughs> I don't I don't know, but if my opinion. My opinion, I think Anthony Richardson is probably one of the reasons Lamar Jackson isn't hasn't got his contract yet. Seriously, I I don't know. That's that's what I think. Um, like I said I didn't get to watch much of the combine. I wish I could have, but I didn't. But let's um, yeah, I think I think. It, it, Dude can throw. I seen him throw it deep. Like he, he looked good. He looked good. Um. So we'll see. There's a lot. There's been a lot of moving parts. OBJ. Um. He's he, he's been making a little bit of headlines. He's still unsigned. Um. And it sounds like it's his choice that he's unsigned at the moment. Um. Seemed like there was speculation that he wanted twenty million a year, and he cleared the air yesterday. Took to Twitter. I I never said I wanted twenty million a year. 
I just want more than four million, which is fair. You got the market currently sitting at eleven million a year. Um, do I think eleven million for OBJ is right? No. OBJ has been very injury prone lately. Eight million, maybe. One year stint, I give you eight million. I'm not giving you the the market, the the current market top right now, which has been eleven million. You got Alan Lazard, four year at the Jets, forty four. That's eleven. Um, Juju just went to the Patriots for three. That's eleven thirty three. Uh, Jacoby Myers, which was kind of effed up. Um, the Patriots let him walk, and then turned around and offered Juju his contract. Basically, <laughs> that's that's pretty effed up. Um, but he just Jacoby Myers just got eleven million a year also. So. So far, current current market value for wide receivers in the NFL seems to be eleven million. I don't think nobody else got signed for anything higher than that at the moment. I've been keeping my ear to the Twitter street uh, daily, looking at Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter and them break things open on during free agent frenzy. And so far, I haven't seen. I checked it earlier today. It don't look like nothing happened, um, other than you know some. Certain signings, you know, like guards and all that stuff. Um, but nothing, nothing spectacular, really. Let's see here. I'm trying to look and see. Oh, well, I shouldn't say nothing spectacular. Uh, Laramie Tunzel, man. <laughs> Lamar Jackson needs to, to have Larry, uh, Laramie Tunzel negotiate on his behalf <laughs> because this dude just broke the bank. Wild. Wild, right? Wild. He, that, that's, that was crazy, man. Um, no agent. No agent. So, it's possible, guys. And girls or whatever, it's possible that you don't need an agent. They they letting it be known. You don't need an agent. Let's see. He um, uh, <clears throat> what did what did he do? Got that contract extension. Staying with the Texans. He got him what uh three year deal, seventy five million, fifty million guaranteed, sixty million in total guarantees. Woo, boy. Hey man, I, if y'all out there playing professional sports, explore the option of doing it without an agent first. See if it works out for you. Because this guy here, no agent. So, but that also goes with you have to be who you who you self represent. If you represent yourself, you have to be able to sell yourself and market yourself, and you also have to you damn well better be able to live up to what you're trying to sell. So, and it's easy. It's easy at that point, I would imagine. So, that's cool. That's cool. So, congratulations to him. We really wanted Tunzel here in Kansas City. That would have been, man, if we'd have got Tunzel and uh, Taylor back there, Mahomes would have had time to bake a cake in the backfield. <laughs> but, shout out to my man, Andy, Big Red, a.k.a. Mr. Hamburglar himself, cheeseburger connoisseur, Andy Reid. Happy birthday, man. It's his birthday. Go shoulder. It's your birthday. All right. As I like to call him, Dr. Dre of the NFL. That's my guy, Big Andy. So... Happy birthday to him. I think he turns, what, 65? Getting up there, man. <sighs> Getting up there. I'm excited for this season. New offensive coordinator, well, return of an offensive coordinator, Matt Nagy. Get to see how things go. Um, I think him and Andy Reid has a solid relationship. Andy Reid is likable by most people. There's no one in the league that really doesn't like Andy Reid. 
So, I mean, except for all the teams I see, well, they probably hate Andy Reid. But on a personal level, I'm sure Andy Reid was well received and liked by everyone. So, I'm sure they'll be able to, to you know, get it, get it. Them two will be able to mesh real well. Couldn't get my words out. Let's see here. Man, I just can't believe M you lost, man. I, can't y'all hear it in my in my tone? Like I'm just I'm just down about it, man. Made up <laughs> a lot of my Twitter friends. Or not friends, but yeah, I guess so. Twitter friends, because I don't really know them personally. They taking it they taking it not taking it too well. A lot of them are KU fans. They're not taking it too well. Super Bowl 54 is on tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time on the NFL Network. You know we're going to watch that. Definitely going to watch that. Mm. Man. So what y'all think? Y'all think, let me ask y'all real quick. Do y'all think Lamar Jackson is going to stay with the Ravens? I think so. I wouldn't if I was him, but I think he is. Um. Sometimes a great a person's greatest uh, failure is uh, loyalty. I I there's no way in hell I'm staying. Just like Josh Jacobs with the Raiders, I'm not staying here. I'm not playing on your free agent tag. You don't want to pick up my option. I'm going somewhere else. I'm not playing on your tag. I don't care. I request a trade because. Josh Jacobs was damn near the better player on the team last year. The guy was a rushing machine. So, and that's rushing, not rushing. So, I there's no way I'm playing on that tag, man. I just can't do it. It's not worth the injury. It's not worth possibly being injured. I'm not saying that would happen, but I'm just saying anything happens in the NFL, I'm not playing on your damn tag. Send me off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, man. So, Lamar Jackson, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's going to accept a deal from the Ravens. I, I have a feeling. The problem is all these players want to be considered. They want to, which which bothers me. Like, dude, you're already getting broke off. I'm not saying don't get what you feel like you're worth. But a lot of these players they're not going after what they feel like they're worth. They're going after what status it gives them. I want to be known in the NFL as the highest player in this position. What the hell? What? No. You you play the game because you love playing the sport and you just getting paid out the ass for it. But but to sit up here and say I want to be the the highest paid player or I want to be looked at as the highest paid player in the in the league in at my current position is is just stupid to me. That's that's silly. Screw all that. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to build a legacy. So if my sons decide they want to play, they won't have an issue of, you know, if you're going to be good or not. Because most coaches and, and GMs are, are blind to the fact that, hey, this your dad was a legend. You are automatically get a free ride. So, um, but yeah, Lamar Jackson, there's no way, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing for the Ravens. Send me some. Somebody will pick me up. I'll take a deal somewhere else. <clears throat> so, we're going to take a break real quick. I'm going to try to clear my throat a little bit. Allergies, man. I've been having my throat dry, my nose dry. It's horrible. So, we'll be back in a minute. This is KC Sports with your man Bishop. Live and direct on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Hold tight. We'll be right back. Some say that Indiana is just a flyover state. Flatlands and cornfields. Barns and country roads. What if I told you Indiana is the crossroads of America? What if I told you in all other states, basketball is just basketball? In Indiana, basketball is life. Crowded high school basketball gyms on a Friday night in every barn with a basketball rim and a frayed, worn-out net. If you're interested in the heartbeat of America, and if you're interested in sports, if you have Hoosier running through your veins, the Crossroads Pod with Aaron X 
is made for you. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Each and every week, the Crossroad Pod covers all of Indiana sports. The pride of the horseshoe of the Indianapolis Colts. The blue collar, gold swagger of the Indiana Pacers. The relentless pursuit of a sixth banner for the Indiana Hoosiers. The swing of the hammer of the Purdue Boilermakers. The swoop of the Cardinals of Ball State. The summoning of the echoes of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The growl of the Bulldogs of Butler. The intensity of an Indiana fever. The chop of the Indianapolis Indians. At the Crossroads Pod, if it is Indiana, we've got you covered. More than cornfields. More than country back roads. The Crossroads of America. Join me, Aaron X, every week. It's nothing but net. Football fans, this is me, your boy Larry, be inviting you to join myself, Colin Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prom time face offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's going on, everybody? My name is Harrison Glazer, and we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast. I cover the Jets, the Islanders, the Nets, and the Yankees. This is Fiona Moss, and I cover the Mets, Knicks, Rangers, and the Giants. Our show is live every Wednesday through Spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content. Again, we're the show that never sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in again. That's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on Night Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
It's IE Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. Hockey fans, I'm Adam Kernan. And I'm Zach Puplis. Together, we are the newest version of Hockey Talk on IE Sports Radio, The Neutral Zone. Zone, 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 zone. We love hockey, but we also know it's not everyone's first sport. So we want to make this show as much for new fans as for the diehards. Whether you can name all the Swedes on the 08 Red Wings Stanley Cup team, or if you can't tell if Varlamov is a goalie or the latest trendy vodka, we're here to help. With facts, figures, and outrageous fans, we bring you all the hard-hitting hockey news you can handle, while still keeping it fun and on the rails. Well, mostly. So tune in every week as we go around the hockey world from college to Canada, the minors and the majors, and everywhere in between. So bring your sellies. And your one-timers. Your wicked ristas. And be sure to protect your five-hole. Catch the Neutral Zone every week on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We promise not to pick on the Arizona Coyotes every episode. This is KC Sports with your man Bishop, live and direct on the IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. So, we were on the topic of my Kansas City. Well, we were talking about the draft and stuff also. But, so, over the past few, you know, past few days or whatever, the Chiefs, we added a couple of new faces. Uh, right tackle, uh, I don't know. I'm, he's a right tackle. I don't know if I want to call him a left tackle. I think they're going to try to put him in that position. So I'm just going to say right tackle slash left tackle. Jawan Taylor from Duval. Those Jacksonville's. Dude is a beast. He's he's a beast. Y'all see that big ass fish he had? Jesus. I think it was like, what, 400 pounds or something crazy? I don't know. That was a big ass fish. I don't I'm not a big fisherman, but it was wild to see that. Um, so we added Juwan Taylor and, uh, defensive lineman Charles Ominihu, Ominihu, something like that, right? Um, like I said, this is the time that matters for me. This is the time of year that matters to me. You know, sure, as a football fan, I love watching the hidden the special playmaking, the touchdown celebrations, and of course, of course, I love the lifting of the Lombardi Trophy. So, that's that's all fine and dandy. But this time of year in the NFL universe, this is what's special to me. 
before we get to the ring ceremony and lay our eyes on that bling bling, we get to witness some true wizardry and greatness occur in the front office of the Kansas City Chiefs. Veach is already making the team better with little to no moves. Like I said, we 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 you know brought back some some players and we added Juwan Taylor and Charles Aminihu. You know, those are big moves, but little to no moves. You know, I don't know if you ever well, it's not really the same. I I know I say it sometimes that I don't want to be known for making big splashes. You know, I want to be known for making small, small, minute splashes that cause big wave ripples. You know, so little little bits and pieces here that can drastically already change this, this team, in my opinion, make the team better. Um, we lost Orlando Brown who basically was a right tackle. Chiefs helped, I don't want to say forced, but they got him to agree to try the left tackle thing, and they helped him improve. He did improve from what he was the first year. He improved. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say he did. He improved. However, it it still wasn't that good. That's why he don't have a contract. Well, that's why he didn't get a contract from us. I think he kind of effed up, him and his agent. Um, should have took the deal that was offered to you <laughs> last season, because uh, I think now I think you went to the to the Bengals. Yeah, I said Bengals. I did say it like that. To those, to the um, uh, chance stillers, because that whole who day who that crap, man. <laughs> Come up with something original. Um, he went there for for a little bit less money, right? So. Not counting pockets, don't care. Um, so yeah, I would have took the other, the deal that the Chiefs made, but anywho, so we lost him. Um, Frank Clark is still out there. Don't be surprised if they bring the shark back. I don't think so because, you know, I think we have pieces. You can't replace the the, the shark. That was that was one of my favorite players. I felt like Frank Clark was the realest player on the team. Um, from a personality standpoint, um. So, you know, Veach is, he he's already making moves, man. He's already making moves, little to no moves, but they're making the team better. Um, you know, not to, not to say my GM is better than your GM on your team, but he is. Veach is better. I don't care. Deal with it. <laughs> um. But while every everyone else is trying to land those big name players, um, you know, and make the most noise by by landing those big name players and throwing out those huge contracts, um, v, Veach and Company is moving with stealth. I'm gonna sound like I'm I'm gonna sound like I'm selling something here. They move with stealth, precision, and focus. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a commercial? It's not like a, a, a car commercial. The all-new Jetta moves with stealth, precision, and focus. It grips the curves. No. Anywho. Um, but yeah, they they you know the like I said, they they're moving, you know, but it, even though it's not really exciting, it's it's the way he's handling things. Veach understands. For his at his age, he understands a lot. At least it comes off that way. So, um, so like I said, they moving with stealth and precision. And, and and when they strike, the last words that we're gonna hear is from 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 critics around the NFL. How did the Chiefs do it? Because last season, everybody and their mother had an opinion that Tyreek Hill was gone. The Chiefs have gotten worse. It's over. Write a story about it. Put it on a shirt. So what happened? Y'all know what happened. I don't have to tell you what happened. Um. So that's. I'm excited for that. Uh. 
to to quote some lines from from Willy Wonka. Um, what what do they say? Do you do you ask an eagle an eagle how it flies or a dolphin how it swims? That's right, you don't, because that's what it was made to do. We're not gonna question Beach. A lot of a lot of my peers, a lot of my fellow chief fans, colleagues on Twitter are questioning Veach. Veach and company has proven themselves time and time again. Everybody wants the Chiefs to go after D Hop. Everybody wants the Chiefs to go after OBJ. Everybody wants the Chiefs to do this. Everybody wants the Chiefs to do that. Sign this receiver. Sign that receiver. Man, we need it. No, the hell we don't. Mahomes, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, Matt Nagy. I'm gonna put them to you know there because EB is no longer here. Man, Washington is gonna do big things. I got a feeling. I promise you that. EB knows what he's doing. He's already pulling players. So, um, they they just proved that we can do more with less. Mahomes was in. I'm not gonna say he was throwing throwing passes to nobodies because you're in the NFL. You somebody. You you worked your tail off to get to that point. So I'm not going to say he was throwing passes to nobodies, but they were pulling six mans off the bench and Mahomes was throwing passes to him. So we just proved you can do more with less. So that's why Veach ain't running out there busting open the cap, even though we don't have a lot. He's trying to correct all that stuff while getting players that's younger so he don't have to really dish out a crap ton of money that we don't have at the moment. Brilliant. It makes sense. We have a ton of weapon, offensive weapons, you know, in place. We have depth for the most part. We have depth on defense. It's okay. We don't need that that big household name. We don't need that name brand. Sometimes great value tastes better. Sometimes the Aldi brand tastes better than than the crafts and the, you know, uh whatever else other brands are out there, you know, big name stuff. We don't we don't need that. We're gonna go with what we can afford. We're gonna whip Veach is gonna go out, he's gonna get all the ingredients. Cause he got most of them. He's gonna get the stuff that you need. He's gonna they they might be they might not have a name attached to him, but he's gonna he's gonna cook it up and he's gonna serve you. And it's gonna be the best tasting damn meal that you ever ate. I guarantee. So don't worry. We still have draft capital. We still have the main piece of the puzzle that pulls everything together. We have the main few pieces, because it ain't one person. We have a lot of the Millennium Puzzle for those out there (laughs) who've watched Yu-Gi-Oh. That's my shit. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, we have Millennium Puzzles, man. We have pieces, the main pieces that pulls it all together. So, um, I'm getting a little off track. What's up, Larry B? My guy. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? So, yeah, we, we have those pieces. We don't we don't need the big household names. We can do it with the with the generic brands, trust me. Um, I hope so. In my opinion, I hope Veach doesn't go get a D Hop OBJ, hell, or even uh DJ Chark. I hope we don't because we have the offensive weapons already. Now, if we're adding depth, that's what rookies are for. You get them out the draft. You get those out the draft. You don't. You don't add depth by going to go get those names. <laughs> it, hey, Larry B. They are sometimes. Man, sometimes those store brands taste better than the big box than the big brand stuff. It it really does. Uh hell when I when I you know go to the store for, for milks and stuff, I don't go get the Highland dairy and all that stuff. I get the, the store brand. Tastes the same. Um But like I said, you don't you don't go get OBJ, DJ Chart, D Hop. Those are starters. You don't go get them. You don't spend money on them talking about we adding debt. 
that's not how that works. <laughs> Those are more than likely with the exclu with the exception of D Hop, because D Hop still got contract. But when you go get Chark and OBJ and stuff, those are one year more than likely going to be one year deals because you don't we don't have the money to give them a multi year, so you don't get them. You want to add depth, you go get the rookies out the draft. That's how you add depth, and then you work with them. <laughs> the big hey Larry Big turn exactly, exactly. Store brand really can be better than the mainstream thing. Better bang for your buck. And you're right. Hey, the big bag uh, cereals, hey, tastes better than the boxes. The boxes be like $7, $8 for a box when you spend 7 bucks for the bag. <laughs> and you get at, at least probably, what, 10 to 15, 20% more in the bag? Come on, man. Better learn how to spend them dollars wisely. Y'all see the, the 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 banks are out here crashing and stuff, falling falling apart, man. They running out of money. You just seen what happened to Silicon Valley Bank, you know? So <laughs> y'all better quit playing. Um Let's see here. So like I said, I I hope we don't. I mean, because as far as I know, our current receiving room um is MVS, Kelsey. Yes, I know he's a tight end, but Kelsey's our receiver. Kelsey, Scott Moore, Tony, and maybe Miko. Miko's still sitting out there too. He hasn't signed anything yet. I think the Chiefs might be. I think they're going to try to bring him back because I think Miko can get. Well, you could probably get Miko for eight million a year. Like I was saying earlier, the current current um, value uh, in the NFL wide receiver wise is what eleven million right now. A year, so I think you can probably get McCole for eight, eight or nine. Um, so if you got McCole and you got Tony on the field, you know you send them through. McCole is good; he knows the plays. But Tony gets a whole, he gets to witness a full Andy Wee, uh, Andy Wee, Andy Reid workout, and I think them two can be something. Turn Robert. Terrence said, as long as Mahomes is the QB, any receiver on the Chiefs is going to be elite. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Somebody gets it. Somebody gets it. Mahomes just proved that. But I'm going to I'm gonna take it one step further. I said McCole and Tony. My focus would be bring, keeping Hartman and keeping McKinnon. That would be my focus if I was Brett Veach. If I was Veach, Paige said big facts exactly. What's up, Paige? How you doing, sweetheart? Um, I'm going to take it one step further, and I've been talking this sentence all week. I know people are probably hearing me, tired of hearing me, because it's a, he's a future signing. He's not actually on the team yet. He hasn't made the team yet. But I, I guarantee, man, I bet every damn thing I got. That that guy's gonna make the team. I'm not a, I'm not that that good of a gambler, but I'll I'll run the risk on that one. And the guy I'm talking about is Mr. John Ross. If y'all don't know who John Ross is, do your homework. He is currently the fastest player in the NFL. Tyreek Hill is fast. This guy's is, this guy is fast with a little bit of oomph behind him. Tyreek Hill 40, I think, was a 429. This guy 40 is a 422. He belongs to the Chiefs currently. He's a future son. I think he came in the league at what 2018 or something. He played under the guy played under Melvin Lewis on the Bengals. They drafted him. Come on. Come and who was the quarterback? Andy freaking Dalton. Really? Really? And then 2021, he went over to the Giants. Who's the quarterback? Daniel Jones. Really? The guy runs a 4-2-2. He needs a quarterback that's going to put that sucker down the damn field. We all know who that is. If he ain't under Allen and he, he, or Mahomes, then he ain't going to, he ain't going to, I don't know. He didn't get a, I don't think he got a chance to even play with Burrow. 
But I guarantee he he would have been solid. He had a little bit of injuries. COVID got a hold of him. But what a 4 2 2 40. Dude, dude, you fast, bro. Unbelievably fast. Crazy fast. Um, So I can't wait to see what he do under Andy Reid in the Andy Reid system with the quarterback being Mahomes. Somebody asses is in trouble. I can guarantee you that. Y'all thought Tyreek Hill was out there eating with Mahomes? This guy is about to open up a damn buffet. I promise you. Because you got Tony. Tony, eh, you got MVS. MVS is, is kind of fast, too. You got MVS, Hartman, and this guy on the field at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. Um, the Chiefs got them, man. I, like I said, we got, we have the Dr. Dre the NFL, Andy Reid. I've said it once, i said it again. When your NFL career isn't doing so good, who the coach they tell you to go see? Juju just got his contract. A lot of guys that was on our team last year got contracts. Hell, even Josh Gordon, he was technically kicked out of the NFL. Andy Reid's like, man, I'll give you a chance. Andy Reid tried to work with him. He he revived him a little bit, but at some point you got to take over and you got to put the work in yourself. But he was able to go over to when when the Chiefs released him, he's able to go to the Titans. At least he got looked at by another team. So you don't think this Josh Ross or Josh Ross John Ross is not going to be something here? Stick around and find out. Stick around and find out. I promise you, man. We we here at the end. It, it went so fast. That hour went by fast. We're gonna be back. We'll be back next Sunday though. We'll probably have a lot to talk about then. Cause there's a lot of moving pieces. Happy birthday to my guy Andy Reid. Thank you, Taryn. I forgot to. I don't even know if I said it, but yeah, I I think I did. Yeah, happy birthday, man. Big Red, baby. You know, 65, I believe. He getting up there, but he's still doing his thing. Um. We're going to see y'all next week for sure. I promise y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in with us. Um, man, I just, I, I can't wait to see this John Ross guy. Like I said, y'all think Tyreek was fast. Y'all, y'all have no idea what's about to happen. Uh, <laughs> the storm is coming, man. Chiefs to the Super Bowl again. We'll be, we'll see you. We'll see y'all in Vegas. <laughs> we'll see y'all in Vegas. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. I am Bishop. This is KC Sports. Live and direct on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Remember, if nobody out there told y'all they love y'all, I do salute to everybody that tuned in. Paige, I'm coming for you. Get ready. No, I'm just kidding. See y'all later. Peace.